Well, first of all, what, what monthly uh, debunking the myths? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I don't think that it's absolutely accurate for you to say that you, you don't care about advertisers and the because you wouldn't have lasted two months in the Sunday Times if your advertising revenue had collapsed by 50%. Because obviously the, the people who own the newspaper will say, well, we're not in it for charity. And we know for a fact that when the transformation began here and Africans were made editors, the distribution went down, advertising revenue went down, they either got kicked upstairs or they left. So it's, it's not critically uh, important, that point of view, but I think to take a position that, that none of these things matters is, I think, it depends from where you're speaking and who you're speaking for. But I wanted to come to this issue of, uh, you see, Mondi also said that there can't be a common vision. Uh, but you then added that uh, you, there's broad consensus. But you can have a common vision. Depending on where you stand sometimes on the ideological divide. The Daily Telegraph in England has absolutely no problem and has never had a problem in describing itself as a newspaper that's pro-Tory. But yet, it was by far the best newspaper in England in terms of news coverage, but had no problem. The, the Guardian had no problem in describing itself as liberal and perhaps more broadly sympathetic to, to the Labour Party. So I don't think the woman's run away from this thing that you can take ideological positions which are favorable to one or other party. Um, and, 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 but be honest about it. And be truthful in the way you would then report what other parties may or may not say. Um, and so I always use the Daily Telegraph as a very good um, example. If you take the Financial Times, which I read every morning for my sins, I find the Financial Times reporting on Latin America to be pretty right-wing. Pretty right-wing. Always exceptionally critical of Venezuela or, or Cuba, but pretty favorable about, uh, to some extent, even a lousy country like Colombia and that. But it's an ideological position they've taken, for whatever reason. But that's my impression, and so it doesn't matter what you think, it also matters what we think of you. Because you write what you think of us, it's important to understand what we think of you. I mean, I think that, that that's what should also be the, the part that the debate should be. So for me, it's quite important for a newspaper or an editor, whoever else, to say, broadly defined, I'm on the side for progressive change. Then the issue of whether you prove poor that doesn't ar arise. Secondly, once you take that position, it impacts upon how you're going to deal with international developments. So you don't sit there and say, must I be balanced about my reporting of Palestine and the Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories? Why? What do you want to be balanced about it for? That's a colonial occupation. Why do you want to be balanced about U.S. occupation of, uh, of Iraq? Only the business day, to its credit, incidentally, gave some prominence to a report of uh, Amnesty International that there are 30,000 political prisoners in Iraq, that many have died as a result of a political, a physical, and psychological torture. Why is that not big headlines in our newspapers? Why? Because I think that's a matter of great significance for people in South Africa to really understand what is happening in the world and then perhaps to try to understand my own view is that obviously the United States have not withdrawn from Iraq. There are 50,000 troops staying there. There are U.S. bases staying there. There are U.S. bases in the region. And they're going to make sure that the oil keeps on gushing. Now, who's going to look and say, who's going to look at the numbers, who's going to look at the data to say who is benefiting most from the exploitation of the oil resources in Iraq? I'm raising this because I think that, for me, is part of what would determine 
at least one's ideological position that you take or you think for yourself that you're taking a progressive uh, position and a progressive attitude um, to, 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 to what is happening.